Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Sorry I haven't really been uploading that frequently lately. I just like took a little break since I didn't really feel like making any videos. Plus I didn't really have any ideas. But in today's video we're starting another series again. And this one is how to make a game similar to Doors which you might have heard about. And I just want to make this clear. I did see a video on someone making a series on this of like a day or two ago. I had this idea for the past like two weeks. I might put a picture on it because I talked to, to my friends about it. So I just want you to know I'm not copying them. I might put the channel in the description if I find it again. But anyways, let's begin. So in this video, we are going to make the generated rooms and we might add some different types of doors as well. So to get started with, we should probably make our room. So I'm just going to make a simple box. For this video, I'm not going to really be doing any designing. I'm just going to get the layout set up. So for our first room, we can actually make this like the spawn room. This is going to be the room that is always there when the player joins. Same room every time. Similar to the first room that's indoors with the elevator and such. So I'm just going to make a box. Which should work fine for now. Actually, keep these evened out. I will cut to you or I'll cut back once I'm done making this little box. Alright, so I finished this little box. I added this little part because we're going to add in a door here, like the elevator door in the actual game, that we can open pressing a button. So, first we can put all this in a folder. I'm just going to make a folder, or we could group all of this actually. That could work fine. I'm just going to name this spawn room or I'm just going to name this room 1 and I'm going to put it in a folder and I'm just going to name this folder rooms so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a wall right here where the button can rest on and now I can make the door so similar to the actual elevator door indoors it's going to be just one simple thin bar like this and then we're going to add some type of chain Let's see here you can make this look however you want as it is your game and just like that I'm just gonna make this a little thicker Something like this should do the trick. Might actually turn this sideways. All right, I've finished the door and I've added all of the bars or chains, whatever you'd like to call it. Now what you can do is you can set one of these parts to the primary part of the model. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna name this to centerpiece which that should be it right so now I probably should have anchored this before I have done anything so now we can make a button I'm just gonna make it a red square that's gonna rest on this wall something like this make it a little flatter and now I'm going to put a proximity prompt into this button change the action text to open and then the object text to elevator door and we can toggle off require line of sight because that makes it so you have to look straight at it like this but we want to be able to toggle it on when we're looking at it from the side and stuff so I'm going to scale this into the wall and now we can begin our first part of scripting for this door so I'm going to hit the plus on the part and I'm going to insert script I'm going to rename the script open door. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the door, the part, and the bars all in a group together. Door. And this is going to be the button or a toggle, whatever you like. And I'll put this all in room one. And I'll add in this wall too. I'm going to group these just to keep stuff 
organized. So now with our button, what we're gonna do is script off parent off proximity prompt dot triggered connect function. So we're gonna get the script's parent, which is what it's inside of, so the button, and then the proximity prompt, which is inside of the button, and then we're gonna get when it's triggered or when someone presses E or clicks on the proximity prompt, and we're gonna turn this into a function. And then in here, we're gonna first get tween service before we do anything. So local tween service equals game get service tween service. Here we're making a variable called tween service and assigning that to game get service, which is getting a service in the game, which is called tween service. Now we actually have to create our tween. So local tween info equals tween info dot new. And this is a little bit different than tweening UI instead of it being like the easing direction style and all that stuff it starts off with how long it's going to take to complete the tween so let's say 0 0.7 then the style which would be enum.easing style and then you can pick from all of these tweening styles that are here i'm going to pick quad and then i'm going to pick enum.easing direction dot and you can pick one of these out in or in out i'm going to pick in out now these others, as you can see here, it's the repeat count, which is how many times you want it to repeat. I'm gonna put zero. And then if it's gonna go back, meaning after it opens, is it gonna go back and close? I'm gonna put that to false, it will stay open. And then do we want a delay before it starts? I will put a zero because I want no delay. So now that we have our tween info, we actually have to make a tween, so local tween equals tween service create so now let's make a variable for our door part so local door equals script dot parent dot door or actually script dot parent dot parent dot door because the script's parent is the button and then the button is inside of the door so the button's parent is door and then we can get the door part inside of door which we should probably name to door part we can just change that to door part and now that is all inside of a variable called door so when we're creating a tween the first thing is the instance which is the object we want to tween which in this case is that door part so we can just put door now we want to put our tween info which we created over here local tween info so we can just put in this variable we made make sure it's the one with the lowercase t because tween info with the capital t is something else now we can make our property table so we're going to put a comma and then some brackets and now we can set any property of the door part that we want by doing something like this so we see there's a position property inside of the door part so we can do position equals so now we can make it tween smoothly to whatever position we want it to be so this is going to be vector 3 dot new and you can do this with any uh, basically any property you can do orientation let's say we want it to rotate then we can make it do that and all that good stuff so now we have to find the position that we want it to be in for it to count as open so let's say I move it to the side like this or how about we go to our position and let's see so when we move it our Z is decreasing so how about we decrease the Z by 10 that seems to be good enough so what we're gonna do is we don't want to modify the doors X or its Y position so we're gonna go to our script and we're going to do the first part which is X is just gonna be door dot position dot X so we want it to have the same X that it has then we want it to have the same Y which is the next parameter so door dot position dot Y but now our z we want to change so now we're going to do door dot position dot z and then we're going to subtract 10 which subtracting 10 will make it go backwards far enough to how we need it this might be different for you just go to your position move your door the way you want it to go check out the the or how much it decreased and then try typing it in manually and see if it works fine so if i change this three to a four it goes back how i want it and that's a decrease by 10 so we're going to do minus 10 and now to play the tween it's pretty simple we just 
call the tween variable and then play it. So now, always make sure to publish your game after doing something. So I'm just going to quick publish this as doors game tutorial. Make sure to save it or publish it, whichever one you prefer. Every single time you make something that is like, I guess, big just in case it crashes or anything as it does crash for me multiple times that's why I do that so do whatever suits you so now we can hit play and let's test this out I might actually have to move the spawn point inside of the room yep I'm out here but let's see as you can see the door tweened open smoothly so I will move this spawn point inside of here which is what I should have done from the start I'm just gonna make it smaller I'm not gonna make it transparent in our room one we can go back to door we can now we have to make it between the bars as you can see we want the bars to open this way and this might actually look weird nope looks fine so I'm gonna make this tween a little slower I'm gonna do like 1.2 as I don't like how fast it's going now we can make another tween but what we might actually want to do is move this local tween inside of our triggered this is just we're, we, we're gonna be doing this more like for the other doors but we're doing this because the position the x position of the door is going to be changed or well, most likely will be changed since the last time we pressed it and I'm not sure how to explain this but let's say we decrease the z by 10 it's gonna keep counting the old z position so let's say the z was at like negative 30 if this is outside of the triggered then it's not gonna update when we click it so if we subtract 10 and it goes to negative 40 and then we go to subtract 10 again and it's outside of here that door.position.z is going to still count as negative 30 whereas if we keep it inside of here or inside of the triggered function it's going to update so it's going to set this to negative 40 and then negative 50 and then negative 60 and so on i'm not sure if that makes sense but that's why we're going to put it inside of our triggered function so now for the bars as you can see we have multiple bars so it's not exactly the same thing there's multiple ways that we could do this but for now, we're just going to loop through all of the bars and tween them. So what we can do is for i v in pairs, script dot parent dot parent dot bars, get children do. So this is the instance variable, and this is basically, or I'll show you after I explain the rest. So we're gonna get the script's parent, which is the button, and then the button's parent, which is the door, and then we're gonna get bars, which is in the door and then we're gonna get the children or the contents of the bars model which is everything that's inside of it so all of these parts in the centerpiece and now what we want to do to it is we're gonna want to make a tween for each one of the parts and we're gonna want to play it so what we're gonna do is local tween2 equals tween service create and then v because v is gonna be the child that we're selected I guess so this is gonna loop through each and every one so it's like selecting them each manually so V is gonna count as this first then it's gonna count as this and then it's gonna count as this so we're gonna be creating a tween for each one of these parts and then we're gonna be playing them for each one of these parts so they all move at the same time and it looks good so we can do basically the same thing that we did up here we can just do V do tween info and then we can set the position to vector3.new now we can check what position is correct so as you can see the original position is what we can look at and we can see that the z is decreasing let's try 10 10 seems to be good so we can just do v.position.x v.position.y and then v position dot z but instead we're going to do plus 10 as me personally i would like the chains to go this way while the door goes the opposite way i just think it looks nicer that way so i'm going to go ahead and publish the game real quick just to make sure it saves 
now what we're gonna do is we're going to play that tween so tween to play and that should be our tweening script completed so let's go ahead and check this out let's let this load up so I have this bug with studio where it sometimes doesn't load up the game for me so let me load it so now when we spawn here and we press E as you can see the chains go that way or the bars and then the door goes that way in a pretty clean transition I might want to fix that as it looks a little weird oh I might not have anchored everything let's see here I'm sure all of these are anchored yep so now once again but I'm going to change this to slower so I'm going to change 1.2 to like 2 seconds just for I guess a dramatic effect so if we press E right here opens just like that very nicely and now we have finished our first lobby so I might cut the video short here and we can do the generated rooms later I just wanted to get done with tweening a door and how it would be like so it could be easier for us to tween doors in the future so the door opens nicely instead of just vanishing all of a sudden in the next episode we will be creating or making generated rooms so let's say we want like a room like this and then a room like that but we don't want it to be set so it's going to automatically generate a bunch of rooms from a few rooms that we've created already so, see ya.